Hey guys, uh, I don't know, I haven't been having, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. You're like, Stephanie, it's already two-thirds of the way through the month, you're doing an update now on March Mystery Madness? I know, it's crazy, but I need to do something, <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the mystery books that I have read, DNF'd, I'm currently reading and still plan to read before the end of the month. It's the 21st right now, um, so I still have about 10 days, so I think I can accomplish some things. Uh, first thing that I'm going to mention right now are the two DNF's so far. Uh, the first one is The uh, the Bat by Joe Nesbo. This was supposed to be my pick for foreign. Um, this is translated by uh, Don Bartlett. Um, and... Yeah, the writing just wasn't for me. I have heard from multiple people that I guess like the third book is where it starts getting good, but I'm not going to start a series on number three and I'm not going to read two books that I don't enjoy to get to something. There's plenty of other series that exist, plenty of other mysteries. I don't need to waste my time. Um, in case you're wondering, the synopsis of this is a Norwegian detective. Um, Harry Hole, Hule, Hule, I think, um, goes to Sydney because a Norwegian woman, I think Norwegian... I should definitely know that, um, is murdered in Sydney or is killed or something. And so he goes to investigate. Uh, it's just uh, the writing is what really is bothering me. I don't feel compelled to pick it up. Um, uh, I don't need the writing to be like, you know, spectacular or like beautiful or whatever. I just need it to like make me want to pick it up and I don't want to pick this up at all. Uh, plus there's like some really problematic language with regards to Aboriginal people that is just no thanks. Uh, next one that I DNF'd is Lie to Me by J.T. Ellison. This one I'm actually like maybe at some point in the future I will read but it's kind of basic uh, you know husband wife situation secrets. I literally only read like seven pages of this. Um, the writing wasn't catching me again. Life is short. I feel like if I knew I was going to live forever I would read this but I'm not going to and it's you know quite hefty and someone else will probably enjoy it so I'm gonna get rid of this um but it felt very much kind of like gotten girl like you know husband wife couple they're lying to each other they've got secrets etc etc um I am reading a short story collection I don't oh here it is <laughs> well, well first let me talk about the stuff I finished I guess um the first thing that I finished is um my uh pick for historical which was uh, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Oh boy, Agatha, uh, she kills me every time. She's so great. Um, I've only been disappointed once, and that once is because I, I guessed who the killer was. It's definitely not as fun to read and like figure out. It, so um, I did not guess who the killer was in this one, and ooh, it was so good. Nothing will top, um, and then there were none just because that was the first one that I read, so when she like really, really surprised me. Um, and I'm curious, like she's got so many books how does she continue to, like, come up with things? Um, but anyway, so uh, we start this book off. Uh, it's a Poirot book. Um, our narrator is a doctor because Hast I think Hastings was the name of the other narrator. He's, like, gone off to with, like, a woman or something. And so we have a new narrator who's a doctor who was, like, just the town doctor. So he um, knew people. <laughs> Doctors know people, so he's the narrator. I'm not good at describing this right now. Anyways, a woman is murdered, and then Roger Ackroyd is like, oh, no, like, I knew, like, she was being blackmailed, and she was about to tell me who. Or she wasn't murdered. I think she committed suicide. Yeah, she committed suicide, but she was being blackmailed, and he was about to find out who did it, and then he is mysteriously murdered, and then the rest of the book is trying to figure out what it was. That was the worst. It doesn't matter. It's Agatha Christie. You either like her or you don't like her. Read the book. Uh, the next one that I finished is uh, The Long Fall by Walter Mosley, and this one I'm using in the category uh, new for, he's a new to me author, I've never read Walter Mosley before. Um, this was so good, this is the first book in the Leon, Leonid McGill um, series. I know uh, his other series I think is uh, more popular and longer and older, like it's been going on for longer, I think it's... Um, Easy Rollins mysteries. Um, but I really, really liked this. Our main character is an ex-boxer who's now like a private eye detective kind of person. Um, but in the past, he's kind of like straddled the line of, you know, things being kosher and not kosher. So like kind of working with mobsters a little bit and people like 
like finding people that may or may not be killed after he finds them. And so he's always kind of straddled that line and now he wants to be like, you know, not on the line at all. He wants to be like totally legit but you can't really always shake that past. Um, so we've got a few different kind of things happening in this book. We've got one general storyline wherein he's trying to find, um, he, he's hired to find four men and uh, one of them is dead already and then the other three, you know. <laughs> and so then he's trying to find out like who hired him and you know what the motives are and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but within that he's also got like familial problems and um this other like past life that's kind of coming back to haunt him. It's very noir, gritty, uh, you know, dirty PI type stuff. And I loved it. This talk about a compelling read. I could not put this down. I, um, and started something else. And I just like, I was like, I need, I need to know what happens. I had multiple ah moments while I was reading this. It was like, it was a page turning mystery for sure. I would definitely recommend this. Um, and then for the books that I am in the middle of, so um, I am in the middle of the Best American Mystery Stories. I'm trying to like, you know, do little um, vlog review type things for each of the mysteries in here. I honestly haven't picked this up in like 15-ish days. So um, the problem is that the next story I know is like 60 pages, which isn't that long. But I hate it when short story collections, the lengths are different. It really... It throws my my stuff off. Like it was three 60-page ones, I'd be fine. But reading a 12-page story, I feel like I've talked about this before, so sorry if I'm being redundant. Uh, but it just kind of puts me off a little bit. So I, I, should, I should keep reading this up because I need to finish this by the end of the month. And then the other ones that I'm in the middle of, out uh, by Carino. Or, yeah, well, Natsuo Carino. This is my pick for foreign now since I DNF'd the bat. Uh, this one is translated by... Steven Snyder and oh boy is this good I feel like I when I mentioned that I was reading this for March Mystery Madness some people were talking about how um it's not a mystery so I feel like there's different like definitions of what a mystery is um and the most common like is like a whodunit or like you know trying to solve a murder or something or trying to solve a thing so where I am so far I'm um like just oh I'm bending that like a fifth of the way through I would say um Things are happening, and I know who's doing them, so it's not a mystery in that sense per se, where I'm trying to find out who did a thing, but it's a mystery in the sense that I literally have no idea what's going to happen next. I don't know where the story is going. I kind of thought it was like about a girl getting kidnapped for some reason based on the cover. Um, again, I don't read synopses of books, so I have no idea what things are about before I read them, but um, yeah, it is really compelling. It's kind of graphic if you don't like body horror type things I would not read this it's more of like a thriller I would say though like for sure it's really you know like tense and stuff it's not like who did this thing kind of story so I guess that's probably why these people uh, said that but I'm really really enjoying this and I'm very very hopeful that I will finish this before the end of the month and the other one that I just started uh, last night or the night before I can't remember things anymore is Brain on Fire uh, My Month of Madness by Susanna Callahan no <laughs> Callahan Kahalan, whatever, uh, this lady right here. Uh, this is my pick for opposite since it's a memoir nonfiction and it's like totally different from the rest of my books. Um, I am really curious as to what the heck is wrong with her. This, it sounds, and I had, um, uh, my partner's cousin, she, they, it, you know, I keep my books in my purse, at least the one that I'm like, that's easiest to read out in public, which is this one for sure. And so she read the back of it and she was like, schizophrenia? And I'm like, nope, it's not schizophrenia. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely something that is life endangering for some reason. So I'm very curious to find out what it is and what happened to her. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like I read, I'm, I'm kind of concerned I'm not going to actually end up liking this very much because I, I did the thing that I'm not supposed to do, which is I went and I looked at the Goodreads reviews, which is very naughty. And uh, people were talking about how the first half of this is very much like a mystery, like trying to find out what's happening. And then the post post time, um, it's like super, super repetitive, which I'm, I hate. I hate repetitiveness so much. So I'm hoping uh, that doesn't grind on me. And if it does, at least I'll know by then what was wrong with her. So <laughs> that'll be okay. Um, I did want to mention some of my other two it sounds like the cats are doing something I don't want them to be doing, but I'm almost done here. Um, are Shelf and Borrow. <laughs> They're only two. Uh, so technically all of these are shelf picks, but again, um, I did pick Shutter Island for this since I found it on that uh, random shelf in that 
pub restaurant thing. Uh, so I'm hoping to read this. If not, then all of these count for shelf, so whatever. Um, and then the last one, Borrow. I originally was going to do the audiobook version of The Girl on the Train that I was going to borrow from the library. Um, but I tried listening to the audio and I just like couldn't. It's so boring. I hate listening to audiobooks. I hate audiobooks so much. So instead, I'm like stretching this definition super hard and my goal is to read this one, uh, The Case of the Not-So-Nice Nurse by Mabel Maney. It's a, a Nancy Clue and Cherry Aimless Mystery. And I saw this on... Um, Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf, um, she read this and uh, reviewed it, and I was like, oh, I need to read that, so I went and bought it um, online. Uh, so I'm going to link Amy's channel below. I think I think that's her channel name. I'm not 100% positive on that, but um, it's like a detective duo of lesbians, and one of them's a nurse, and yeah, I'm pretty excited to read this. It's kind of short. I'm hoping it's uh, fast-paced. The font's a little small, though, but Anyway, so that's my new pick for that. And I'm really hoping to actually finish these things. We'll see. Uh, how is everyone else's March Mystery Madness going? I'm sorry I've been MIA. I just, you know, stuff happens. Uh, so anyways, let me know if you've read any of these books or read anything good. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.